Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final part of the game. We're at the home stretch, and now we're going to be looking at the extras today. So, for starters, we're going to look at all some of those mini games in the single player and one of them in the multiplayer. So, first one we're going to take a look at is Balloon Trip, which I'll do in a minute. So, let's have a look at them close up. Okay, so let's select Balloon Trip now, shall we? Blue Trip. Come on. Okay, so we're going off to Blue Trip today, ladies and gentlemen. Blue Trip is, of course, you uses both the Wii Remote and the Nunchuck. So we can actually connect the Ballot Stone on this game. So, as you can point out, Balloon Trip is this 3D version of the exact one of the game modes of Balloon Fight on the NES. And that's kind of imitate the imitate picture. So, right off the bat, you've got to flap. In order to fly, flap both the Wii Remote and the Nunchuck together in order to fly. If you want to go left or right, then press the Nunchuck or the Wii Remote. Pressing the Nunchuck goes left, the Wii Remote goes right. Unless you're right arm, that is. Okay, so well, got so anyway. You so the main objective is to get rid is to not see is to not touch any of those electronic balls, and of course pop those balloons in order to get the high score. You can also uh, each balloon each balloon gives you about ten points. And if you collect, and if you actually pop a rival balloon, it'll give you 100 points, which is pretty good. But if you actually get hit by those fish, or get hit by an electric spark, the game is over. You've only got one life in this one. So, then if you complete 1,000 yards, you'll be able to get a rest, and a bit of a respite. Okay, so... The music is pretty peaceful as well. It's pretty good. Down you go. You're not going to be my rival anymore, matey. <laughs> this is a bit intense. Oh, oh, for God's sake, why did I do that? Anyway, that's balloon trip for you. That's the game for Lazium. That's only Snowbox Planetary. So next what the next thing we're gonna go for is of course Blockstar. Blockstar is of course the minigame of variant of of young cricket's boss stage where you have to stack the um stack those blocks up in your hand. What you have got to do is to stack up the blocks. It's pretty much like the boss. It's pretty much like the boss in Young Cricket, only except that you have to uh, get six blocks instead of four. And once you get all the blocks on each other, hold for three seconds and you've completed the stage. So, and there's 10 stages of this as well. So, so try and uh, try and hold. Oh, that's pretty beautiful. Some of the blocks are actually pretty well designed as well. In terms of their, in terms of their patterns, uh, it's pretty good. It kind of like ain't ain't they're kind of like um old Chinese Oriental kind of uh, blocks, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's get the set point on top of that, but don't topple it over. No, don't, don't hold it, please, 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 don't fall off, don't fall off. If it if it's about to fall off, then then that doesn't matter. Because if it's nearby, because if it's nearby the finishing thing, you can act the finishing time. You can actually, um, you can actually finish this off, and actually some of them will float in midair, but they won't be able to um, fall off, making you fail. So, so that's a good thing. I actually like the music variants of this as well. So that's pretty good. So it's absolutely beautiful. This uh, game is. Don't fall off, don't fall off, don't fall off. Oh, that looks like a tank, doesn't it? The middle part is the body, the lower parts are the wheels, and the top is the turret. 
Anyway, so that's Block Star completed, and now we're going to have a little look at some of the other. We're going to have a, a few names of the ones. We've got Tortoise of the Hare, the the tower, tower Tennis, and of course this one. We've got now got his Can Shooter. Now, for those who aren't in the know of this game, Can Shooter is like a gallery shoot. It's a gallery shooting game where you have cans. Feel a bit like Duck Hunt, only except with cans. But in a time we're in a strict time limit and no and you and you and you can miss as many times as you like. But all you gotta do is to shoot as much cans as you like to get a huge score. So anyway, the aim of the game is to actually shoot cans. But you've got two enemies of this game. We've got three enemies of this game actually. The timer, which is of course it gets faster. When you progress through the game, it gets faster and the pace gets a lot more intense. It's. The other two enemies of this game are the main, are your main enemies. The those guys who throw dynamite at you and missiles that come straight, straight towards the camera. And of course, speed is also your enemy as well. So there are a few power. So the power ups in this game are a timer, which can actually slow down the actual pace of the game for for a limited period of time. You got these uh, heart ones, which increase your time, which extends the timer. And of course the and of course the rockets cans, which can actually get make your reticle more more better, giving you more better precision aiming. And and there's also some big cans as well. There's also big. There's also these big cans as well, which you can actually destroy in order to change the scenery. But these are actually quite eight bits and quite quite exquisite. Look at the graphics on this one. This is like eight bits. This is like eight bit styling. Oh my god, so oh dear. Sometimes if you get a little bit nervous on this game, that can happen quite a bit. Okay, let's do this again. So like I said, whenever you destroy these cans, which I see here, the big cans, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to change the scenery. Yeah, this is this isn't as mu I, there's nothing much to say about this game, only except it's very simplistic. It's like your typical cat. It's like your typical gallery shooter, only except you have to shoot cans and don't get hit even once. Because if you do, that will cop rude costly, and you'll have to do the game all over again. It'll result in a game over. And and the game goes faster as as you as as you go on. So, and the power-ups actually give help your cause as well, so that's good. Oh, it's getting intense now. I think this is the furthest they got in this, in this playthrough. Come on, let's do this. Come on, you can't get me, Rockets! <sighs> you want to do it, eh? Stop going into me! They keep doing this to me. I will not. I will not stand and tolerate your stupid today. Come on, let's do this. And, and also, and also, when the game goes faster, the timer also goes fast as well. Oh, I missed that as well. Damn it! You can't get me. Oh, that was a failure. Anyway, that's can shoot everybody. I'm actually going to be showcasing. So, with that being done, I'm going to be showcasing the next part of the game, which is of course the multiplayer, one of the multiplayer games. But first, we're going to have a little look at some of the others. So, back. There's others like Tape, Tail Tennis, and the White Rabbit. There's also an unlockable game which you can actually unlock. According to the Mario Wiki, you can actually unlock them 
using the unlock them after getting all the micro games. I don't know why I did that going to the options, but anyway, we're off to the multiplayer parts. This is empty, but once you play more multiplayer games, you can actually unlock them. Okay, so for, for my time being, we're going to be playing some darts. Yes, old English darts. So let's play. This is a realistic darts game using the 301 rules. Whoever gets to zero first from 301 wins. So within that, I'm going to be using Mitch and my P21 and of course my test one, which I used for my test playthrough like I said in the first part. Right, darts club. So whenever you start this game, you actually, the player gets chosen in random. P2 goes first, ironically. Now I have to go last. Ugh. So basically, this is kind of like your typical darts. Gets to first one that clears a hundred, three hundred and one actually wins the game. The game, the dartboard is pretty much similar to that of your typical pub dart board. And that was, and when it like if you get a trip, if you get X, you get twenty in the middle. If you get twenty in one of the reds and the bot in the middle part of it. You actually get a triple 20. Double top gives you 40. And of course, obviously, the bullseye, which you can see right now, gets you 50 points. You get to the bullseye. That's the bullseye. Anybody watch any, any of the, uh, the darts? Um, has, there been, has anybody been able to watch the darts game show called Bullseye, which is called, which is presented by Jim Bowen, and of course, Tony Green does the, oh, goes, does the um, call out. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one I actually remember. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing a lot of darts. So, and in this game, you actually, if you get, if you actually have, have the lowest score after ten rounds, you can actually um, win the game. I got a triple twenty. Yes. So, so you actually on a limited time here. You've only got ten goes before the game ends. You have to get to three hundred one as quickly as possible. Oh, she missed. And some... Now, the weird thing about this darts game is that the game can be a bit weird at times. Can be a bit sporadic when it comes to accurately having shot. Making your own shots. Because whenever you go to 20, it would either go to 5 or... Or a triple 5 or... Or somewhere else on the board. Like I'm trying, to, like test tried to aim at the bullseye, and he only got 14, and he's still behind. And I'm catching up with P2 now. Okay, so uh, this is a bit. This is going to be a long darts game. That's because I, me and some of the, me and the other me's actually got busts as well. So that's not very good. Test Nick is next. He's well behind Testers. 15, 20, 5. Yeah, he's still behind, but I'm, but I'm not, but I'm still, but I'm still be, I'm ahead of him, but I'm still behind Tech P2. So I've got triple, so I need a triple 20 in order to win the game, so. Oh, and P2's also nearly finished. So Ichi's got 18, so so she's got 24 in order to win the game. That means triple, double 12 in order to win the game. Next, I've got to um, and he's the and test is still behind. I need a triple 20. Come on, triple 20, come on. No. Yeah, no. What can I do it to two? Oh, 33. That's just got the odd number now. So what is, uh, so what does, um, where's the 12? Ah, it's there. Oh, she's missed it. P2 needs triple 12 in order to win the game. She's missed it again. Ugh. Sometimes it cannot be, can be a bit too, but oh, she got 14, so I mean she needs a double five in order to win the game. So five is actually near, but next to the 20 and the 12, between 20 and 12. Oh, he's, oh, he's got a double top, top, so he's now gaining on us. He's still behind. I need to even the odds. Does not 
Does it look like a 13? No, it's a 10. Give me a 3. Come on. Yes! So I need a double 10 in order to win the game. Uh, come on. P2's got... P2's way ahead of me. She needs a double 5. Oh, that is the double 5. But she needs an, an odd number in order to... Actually, no. She's down to 5 now. That's kind of like... um. That's kind of like done. Oh, she, he's only got three fives, so that means I'm still gonna try and see if I can take um P2. Ugh. It doesn't matter if you get double top or anything like that. You can still you can still win the game by doing it. Oh, I got bust. Okay, so P2's next. She needs a five in order to win the game, so and she's got bust as well. So what can the test do? Oh, he's and he's gaining on us, but he's still behind. Oh, come on, I need a ten. Oh, I got twelve. I need an eight. Where's an eight? Where's the eight? I need a triple four. Oh, I need four or double two so in order to win the game. Bust again. Ugh. Now it's P 2s turn. If B two actually beats me, I'm not gonna be happy. B2's buster, that means I still got a chance. So come on, let's see if... Let's see if you, Tess, can actually get a... Oh, he, he's gaining on us 30. And Tess is still behind. Okay, so I need a 20. Oh, i done it! Yes! I've done it! I was away! Yeah! And I've cleared it! Yeah! And so I dance, P2 looks, and Tess, <laughs> Tess rolls about it losing. <laughs> Tess was so humiliated that he had to roll about in humiliation. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, we're going to have a look at the, some of the extras. We're going to look at the um, sound studio first. So, let's look. Sound Studio is, of course, you listening to the music of all the, um, will let, allow you to listen to the music of every one of the, uh, of the, of the participants and the, and the main music background on it. And you could also, um, and you could also do your own sound effects as well, like this. By, um, by actually, um, by actually flinging up the, um, by actually flinging up those, uh, symbols, which can be, um, those are the symbols of um, sound effects. Sound effects can be done by flinging symbols up in the air like this. You can actually do your own crazy stuff with this one, so that is actually a pretty cool feature. And you can actually speed it up as well, so you can actually uh, do something like that. <laughs> We're gonna make our own stuff. Anyway, with that, we're going to be exiting the sound studio and going off to the movie theatre. With that, we got the movie theatre. So, so, so what it is, is that, looking at those, so, so let's have a look and see what those ones, the, these ones are the, of course, the, um, these are the, um, cinematics of the, um, whole entire one of the, of the game. Then we got the, then we got the introductionary ones, the introductionary uh, posters of the, of all the characters of this game, and the cinematics have the are the ones that animate it, are the animations of each character. So within that, we're going to have a look at the temple form as well, which is the temple form actually holds up any of the micro games you've played so far. You can actually replay those. You can either select them by designated character or by designated form. And it depends on whichever form you play this with. So. That is a pretty good way to play in this game, so... With that, we're gonna go back. As we can tell, it's... We've done all the extras, but I'm not quite sure if we're gonna do the, um... The uh, credits, but... What, um, what... For what I can tell right now, we have now finished WarioWare Smooth Moves. My LP has now been finished. Christ, it nearly took a week for me to actually get all the commentary done. 
But boy, did I actually finish right now. So, I'm actually quite glad about this game. So, my final thoughts of WarioWare Smooth Moves. It's an absolutely brilliant game. It's a game that really defied the odds of the Wii's um, critics. And it really silenced them in a way that the Wii Remote would be unworkable. And just a gimmick and uh, just a complete uh, way of telling of the of Nintendo hiding the fact that they nowadays are in the past compared to the decks of Xbox and the PlayStation worlds. So within that, I actually say that this game is absolutely fantastic. If you actually find this game at the stores or anywhere on the internet, get this game get, and try and to remind yourselves what the Wii Remote was capable of. So, without further ado, this is me, Mitch McKid, signing out saying goodnight. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, I'll see you guys at my next playthrough and my next LP. So, until next time, play it safe, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll see you guys at my next LP. Toodles!